How's it going guys? So in today's Blender tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this logo reveal using some really cool simulation techniques. It's gonna be super fun. So the first thing we're gonna do is simulate all of our spheres at once. And I'm gonna show you how you can actually control and actually comfortably use the rigid body system and not just feel like you're doing random things and actually have a handle on what's going on in your viewport. Next thing, we're gonna do some projection magic to actually get your logo, your image to actually form when the spheres are moving and finally simulated. Next, we're gonna do some simple but very effective shading to just make this look nice and professional. And lastly, we're gonna light it, render it, and we're gonna be on our way. So this is a really cool tutorial, a lot of really nice just quick tips in it that's really gonna help you in a lot of other projects. So we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so by the end of this tutorial, we're gonna have a project file that looks very similar to this. You guys on Patreon, you can get this project file right now on all three tiers. If you don't know about the Patreon, there's a lot of really cool stuff on it and you can check it out. Three tiers, cool things. It's really my hub for motion graphics and showing some really cool techniques. All right, let's get into how to create this. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get a new folder. And let's go ahead and hit Shift A and we're gonna get a plane. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch it out to be kind of, you know, 16 by nine, but this is not really an exact science. Next, I'm gonna hit edit mode, tab, and I'm just gonna hit E and make a pretty deep bucket in a sense. And then with this face still selected, I'm gonna hit X and faces. So this is what's gonna hold all of our spheres. What we need to do is go down here to the physics tab click on rigid body and go from active to passive and go from convex hole to mesh. Passive, make sure that the object doesn't move and uh, the balls are actually gonna hit it and you know stay it like a bucket. And then the, uh, the mesh is so that you know it's the preset. Basically, if you don't have a primitive shape, it'll try to read it and map to it. All right, now let's go ahead and get a UV sphere. I found for this, the UV sphere to really perform better and they're easier on my computer. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but but that's from my experience, the icospheres were a little bit more heavy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit S, scale it down to right about here, hit Control A and apply scale. All right, so let's just bring them up. We're gonna go to the physics tab over here, click on rigid body, keep it on active and go from convex hole to sphere. And that is a perfect preset to make sure that these work and you can hit space bar to make sure it simulates properly. I'm gonna hit the tilde key, it's right above the tab key and then I'm gonna hit G and move him to the corner. And then I'm gonna hit Shift D and duplicate these till they fill from top to bottom. Something like this, and I'm gonna hold down Shift and select, except for that bottom part, select all of the spheres and then hit Shift D and duplicate them from, le from uh, left to right so that we can have this. And you wanna make sure it's not intersecting with anything. If the spheres are intersecting with each other, you are just asking for a problem to happen. All right, now that they're here, I'm gonna press play, make sure everything looks good, everything works. Very nice. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, highlight these. I'm gonna hit M, new collection, call it ball, ball pit, or whatever you wanna call it. And then I'm gonna duplicate it three more times. You do it either three more times or however much your computer can put up with. I'm gonna press play and if they start to fall out, I'm just gonna go back to the beginning, scale up my little box here and apply that scale, bring them in. And there we go, we have a nice little ball pit. I really like my viewport to look nice. So I'm gonna hit this drop down and click on cavity and uh, shadow. And then if you want, you can go to a mat cap and click on random. And now you have something real fun here. All right, so this is working out really nicely. Let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead and watch them all drop into their uh, respective locations. And what I'm gonna do now is if you look, all of these um, balls are in the ball pit 
thing here, which is really nice, the uh, collection. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and select objects. I'm gonna hit F3 and type in apply visual transform. So right here, apply visual transform on all these selected objects. So now when I go back to the beginning of the timeline, all of these are still active rigid bodies, but they're just here at the beginning of the timeline, ready and set. And this is really like, and this is really step one of the two steps I'm showing you how to really take a handle of your rigid bodies and really do with them what you want and control them correct, uh, correctly. All right, so now we have these ready to be simulated further. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift A, go to a force field, I'm gonna get a turbulence force field. And just to show you in an extreme level what this does, if I give this a strength of a uh, thousand and I press play, the force field, the turbulence specifically, will just kind of make them go crazy. And so to a lesser extent, and uh, we, we're gonna bring that lower, and then I'm gonna show you size. Bring the size, see how it's kind of, they're all over the place, it's like crazy wind. This size here, if I give it to like eight, it'll much more kind of handle it like one big gust. If I show you now, see how that works? So that's what the size is going to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a size of three and a strength of 300. And now if I press play, they're just simulating, you know, very calmly. And that's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna bring a flow of like five as well, make it look nice. And this is what we're dealing with. In fact, I'm giving a strength of 400. All right, so now that we're pretty happy with the way things look here with the force field, what I'm gonna do now is animate the force field. Um, I have it selected right here. I'm gonna hit M and um, bring it to my scene collection up here. So they can be right there, and my cat has joined us again on this journey. It's not a tutorial if Cindy hasn't hopped in my lap. All right, so let's go ahead and animate the strength of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, keyframe here, go to uh, go to frame 80, and then bring it down to, um, actually no, click the keyframe there to consistently keep it at 400, and then all the way to frame 100, we're gonna go to zero, there we go. So now we have a stopping point of everything simulating, and then we can just let it all settle. And that looks like it's gonna be around a 220 where I'm willing to see it settle. And so that's what we're gonna do next, is get this to be final and solidified here. So I'm gonna click on this guy and hit H to hide it. And I'm gonna click on one of these spheres, and I'm gonna go from to a select, select all by type, and select mesh, F3, and I'm gonna type in bake to keyframes. And then I'm gonna do 220, that's how many frames I'm gonna bake, and we're gonna click OK. Now the only bummer about the bake to keyframes things is it doesn't give me like a status bar of how long it actually takes to bake out. You just simply have to wait. Um, that's the biggest bummer here. Maybe they'll fix that one day. And there's definitely other ways to bake, but we're already done. Um, so there we go, that's how long it takes to bake this fella. So now this is keyframe. So if we were to introduce another force field into this scene, it's not going to affect anything because these are no longer rigid bodies. These are just animated objects as you can see in the transform. It now converted that rigid body simulation into actual keyframes, which is really awesome. So we can bring that uh, plane back in our bucket if we want. Um, we definitely need to have that background for that type of thing. So now, we can go ahead and project for our material. So first thing you need to do is open up Photoshop or whatever image editor you have. You, you can even use Blender, just get like, you know, a black background with your logo with an emissive, ob an emissive object, just keep it black and white and export that out. In my case, I'm using Photoshop and just go ahead and pick the logo or text or whatever, even like a meme as an image, that would be fun to project onto your uh, spheres. If you're doing logos as a logo reveal, bold, like big thick ones work better. The Nike logo I, I saw to work really well. MTV almost worked except this part right here was so thin it was hard to actually read TV and the Blender logo, it, it worked well enough. Um, so I ended up using a different logo. I ended up using the YouTube logo because it's just like a primitive object. You can see my cat like struggling to get comfortable here. Now we have to readjust so she's happy. All right. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna show you how to project this. So what we're gonna do is hop to the shading tab here and I'm gonna select just one of these objects, get a new material and I'm gonna change the color so we can see it. Now that you have this one object selected here in the ball pit collection, right click, select objects, control L, which is the link and then click materials. They're all now gonna have this material and I'm gonna shade smooth while we're at it. 
So what we can do now is click on this principle. And if you have the node regular add-on enabled, it comes with Blender by default. I'm sure you've heard of it by now. Um, I'm gonna hit Control T and I'm gonna open up my logo. So if I go down here and get in the uh, logo, I would encourage using black and white so you don't have to do this extra step that I'm going to have to do. But now you can see all the YouTube logo is projected onto all these spheres, but it's not working properly. So again, if you deselected them, go ahead, select the ball pit, select objects. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit tab for edit mode. Now they're all selected. I'm gonna hit U to unwrap and click project from view. And now you can see it's actually working properly, but we need to go to our UV editing tab to actually get these to be scaled properly. So just highlight them all and hit S to scale and just bring it up. And you can hit G to kind of center them out to be perfect. So this is what we're looking for. We can go back to the shading tab and you can see now it's awesome. And remember now the actual position of where you project is very important. So I'm gonna to go to my timeline and I'm at the beginning, right? So if I press play, now they're going to undo themselves. So I need to choose maybe, let's pick a, let's pick a frame or I actually want them to project. So they stopped animating and the idea is to project the spheres when they're kind of settled, which looks like 180. Let's do 180, let's project now. So what we can do, I'm gonna go back to the, uh, Material preview, ball pit, select objects. We're gonna go ahead, the tilde key, tab, U, project from view. We can go back to UV editing, and I'm sure there's a way to not have to do this every time, but it's okay. And then hit G, like that, back to shading. So now we can watch the illusion work. If we go back to the tilde key here, we could press play. Maybe bring this down a little bit, it's kind of distracting. And now you can see the logo is forming as the balls are settling. Cool, very cool. That's what we're looking for. So this is like the moment of formation. All right, we now have this part figured out. What we're gonna do now is make these materials actually look awesome. I'm gonna go to cycles, hit the drop down scene, world scene light, so we can just use the default HDRIs. And this right here is gonna be used as a mask not actually colored data. So we're gonna go to here. So we need to get one of these guys to be RGB. So we're gonna to go to the base color, click on R and bring this back, bring this back. Now it's gonna be red. We're gonna bring our specular down. So it looks like that. And we're gonna bring a clear coat in. So they look really deep red, but glossy at the same time. We're gonna get in a mix, um, mix shader. And then we're gonna get in another principle, but this one's gonna be white. Plug that in and then just make this white. Now they're mixing together. So what we have to do now is plug this in as a mask. But since this, ha this has color data and it's not black and white, I gotta get a color ramp in the middle so that it does convert it to black and white. So now we have this. We'll go from linear to constant and that's gonna really actually make this work properly. And then you can use a invert node to invert which one has the red material and which one has the white material which is, I don't know, it's pretty fun, it's pretty cool. We're gonna bring our specular up on this one and clear coat is fine. So now we have this much going on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a color ramp and then get this to be, you know, pure red. So bring that back and bring that back and keep this one down here at black, plug that into base color and we're gonna get a layer weight and plug in facing. So now we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and, and flip my color ramp so the black portions are on the outside and you can play with like how much it's gonna do it, but this really just adds a little bit more contrast and definition into the spheres to make them look a little bit more round. On this, I'm gonna click on this box in the background, click new, and we're just gonna make this one also just a pure red to blend in. All right, so now we have our materials uh, which we can kind of look at them here and they look really nice as you can see super nice looking materials and I'm gonna hit the tilde key go to the top it's about time we get our camera so shift a get a camera control alt zero snap it to view and I'm gonna hit G and then you can G and middle click to move in and out um, but we definitely don't want to show the box too much and then I'm gonna hit F3 and get a render region I can only use one hand now for this tutorial because my cat is hanging on my other arm, uh, but that's okay. 
All right, here we go. This is our render region. In fact, let's do it one more time. There we go. All right, this is what we're working with. All right, now we need to go ahead and add in some lighting. So I'm gonna uh, get back to the default lighting setup and we're gonna go ahead and get a uh, spotlight. I'm gonna hit S to scale it. I'm gonna hit G to move it over here. And then I'm gonna hit R twice to point it right at the logo. In fact, let's go to the end so it's pointing properly at the logo. And I'm gonna hit R to kind of move it. Go here to the light settings. I'm gonna give it 20,000. And then bring the spot size down. And so now we can really pay attention to the positioning by hitting R twice and then moving your keyboard or I mean your mouse around. And then now here on the radius, we can smooth out the gradient of this whole situation. And maybe we can go to 50, 50,000 on the lighting. Now, what I would recommend is getting an HDRI from Polyhaven. Um, so we're gonna click on assets and click on HDRIs. Go ahead and get an HDRI from Polyhaven and that's going to uh, help fill out those shadows for us. And then I'm gonna use one called Auto Shop. It should be down here somewhere. This is one right here, Auto Shop 01. So you can probably just search it and don't go ahead and download the 4K EXR. And so what you can do now is click on the world icon, click on this little yellow button, environment texture, click open, and I'm gonna navigate right here. And then I'm gonna give my strength at 0.3 to really fill out those shadows. And let's just go ahead and give it a render to see how it looks. All right, so it looks pretty much perfect. We'll denoise and uh, pretty much be done here. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um, here on your export settings, 1920 by 1080 is really good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and render out um, frame range, we're gonna do 210 on the frame range for the export. And uh, feel free to do a PNG sequence if you like it. Some people don't like them for some reason, uh, but that's okay. If you want Blender to just export out a video for you, go from PNG to FFmpeg video, go ahead and pick your file location on encoding, go to MP4 and output perceptually lossless. And then um, here on my render settings, I'm gonna go ahead with max samples of 300. That's what really is working for me. Render, render animation. And when you're done, you'll have a really nice looking animation, much like mine. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is a really fun one to do and you could just really do cool stuff with this and this transfers to other ideas. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. If you wanna help support the channel, check me out on Patreon, check out Real Time Materials. That really helps me keep to do this uh, full time. Uh, thank you guys, I'll see you in the next tutorial.